Hey YouTube, it's Roman. Today I want to talk about generating correlated Brownian motions in Python. Uh, first, I want to walk through why we would want to even do this in the first place, and then I'm going to give you two different ways of accomplishing this sort of generation. So if you take a look here, we have a practical example of what correlation in the market looks like. We have the S&P 500 plotted with the VIX from January to August of 2016. And if you take a look, these two assets are relatively negatively correlated with one another. So when one moves in one direction, the other moves in the other direction. And this is the case for many assets in the market. Say we wanted to do some sort of risk analysis on a portfolio, or if we wanted to price some exotic or some path dependent option with respect to a basket of equities, we're gonna to wanna to take into account the empirical correlation between those assets so that we can have better analytics, we can have better risk metrics, we can have better prices. Uh, and to do that, we're gonna need some way to generate this correlation or impose this, this correlation uh, on our simulation. And that is exactly what the generation of correlated Brownian motions aims to accomplish. Hopefully that's enough motivation. Now we can actually get started with the generation. So there are two different ways we can generate the correlated Brownian motions. I'm gonna start with the Kolesky decomposition and then we're gonna to go to more of a, an analytical way of doing it. So for starters, I'm gonna go ahead and import numpy as np and then import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So we can perform our linear algebra operations and generation, and then we can also visualize the processes themselves. So what is the Kolesky decomposition? Well, instead of doing some analytical linear algebra, I'm just gonna tell you if we have a Hermitian positive definite matrix A, we can decompose it into a product of L and L transpose, where L is the lower triangular matrix and L transpose is the corresponding upper triangular matrix, the product of which yields the original matrix A. If all of this sounds foreign to you, don't worry, we're gonna do this all programmatically so you're gonna be able to see what a Hermitian positive definite matrix is. You can just think of something like a correlation matrix. Uh, and then the actual decomposition is gonna be done for us in NumPy, so we're not gonna be doing any linear algebra here. Let's go ahead and set up this Hermitian positive definite matrix, or in other words, let's just go ahead and set up a correlation matrix that we wanna impose on two Brownian motions. So you can think of the two Brownian motions as the driving process for two different assets, say the S&P 500 and the VIX, for example. So we're gonna specify a correlation that we want to impose. I'm gonna say rho is equal to negative 0.9. So that is going to be the correlation that we want to impose on the two Brownian motions. Next, we're going to define the correlation matrix itself as capital C is equal to NP dot array. Then we're gonna create a matrix with two rows for the two assets with two columns. So we're gonna say one for the correlation of an asset with itself, and then row for the correlation of the two assets with each other. And then we're gonna do the same thing just in the opposite order for the second row as seen in a traditional correlation matrix. So now we have the correlation structure that we're trying to impose on these Brownian motions. Now to go ahead and find the Kolesky decomposition of this correlation matrix or this Hermitian positive definite matrix, we can go ahead and say L is equal to np.linalg.koleski and then pass the correlation matrix through and we're done. Now we have the Kolesky decomposition. So <laughs> it is that easy. Now I want to specify the time step for the Brownian motions themselves. I'm gonna say dt is equal to one over 252. So we're going to be taking a daily time step between Brownian motion increments. And to simulate the Brownian motions themselves, I'm gonna say x, which is going to be a matrix of our two assets, is equal to np.random.normal. And it's going to be mean zero with a standard deviation of the time step uh, raised to the power of one half, so square root of the time step. And we can do that by saying dt raised to the power of one half. And then I want to simulate two assets and a thousand steps for each asset. So you can think of this as essentially generating 1000 daily time steps um, for two different Brownian motions. Now we can actually go ahead and correlate these Brownian motions. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna use the Kolesky decomposition. So we can say the CX is equal to MP dot dot L and X. So this is now going to contain our correlated paths. So if we wanted to go ahead and plot this, we can say for path 
in CX, plt.plot, and then remember, we're still in the difference space. So we can say path.qsum. And look, take a look, we have our correlated Brownian emotions. So we're starting at zero and we have a negative 0.9 correlation matrix imposed on these two random paths. If you're still not buying the original correlation matrix was imposed on these two processes, then we can go ahead and say mp.coreCoef for correlation coefficient, then pass through the CX matrix. And if you take a look, we get ones on the diagonals just as any correlation matrix because that is the Brownian motion correlated with respect to itself. Uh, and then the off diagonals are going to be the negative 0.9 that we had imposed earlier. So we can see that the Kolesky decomposition is very effective at imposing a correlation structure on these two processes. So that's gonna be one method of correlating Brownian motions. What about another method? Well, here is a more analytical method for you that is going to yield the same results. So if we have say two Brownian motions, we have W T one and Z of T, you can see that the increment is distributed normally with a mean zero and standard deviation of square root of the time step the two Brownian motions are orthogonal to one another, then we can go ahead and impose a correlation structure using the coefficient rho on W of T1 and W of T2 by essentially satisfying the equation W of T2 is equal to rho W T1 plus root one minus rho squared Z of T. So if we can satisfy that and use the Brownian motions as they're defined, then we can accomplish the same thing as the Kolesky decomposition did. We actually have all the pieces to the puzzle here. So we generated two Brownian motions originally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick the second one as our Z of T process. So I'm gonna say Z of T is equal to X1 and W T1 can be the first process. So I'm gonna say W T1 is equal to X0. Okay, well, now that we have our W T1 and Z of T and they both satisfy Brownian motions and they're orthogonal to one another, we can go ahead and construct this WT2. So WT2 is equal to rho times WT1 plus mp dot square root one minus rho squared. And that is going to be multiplied by the ZT. Now, where did I come up with that? Well, that's defined right here. So we have our Brownian motion satisfying that they're orthogonal to one another, satisfying that the increment is distributed normally, mean zero, standard deviation, square root of the time step. And we built this process WT2 based on WT1 and Z of T. Just as before, we can go ahead and plot this. So I'm gonna say plt.plot, I'm gonna say WT1.qsum. So that's gonna plot the WT1, so the first asset. And then I'm gonna say plt.plot WT2, so the second asset, qsum. And if we go ahead and do this, we'll see we actually get the same two paths with the same correlation structure. These two charts are exactly the same. We didn't do any regeneration of, of variables or anything like that. We simply imposed the correlation structure in a different fashion. If you still don't believe me, we can go ahead and do the exact same thing we did before with NumPy to check the correlation of these two assets with respect to one another. We can say mp.array and we can fill the array with wt1, wt2. Then we can call mp.coreCoef on this array and we get an output of, look at that, ones on the diagonal and then negative 0.886. If we go up here, we get negative 0.886. So we have the exact same result, just using a different methodology. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on correlated Brownian motions using a Kolesky decomposition and then a more analytical solution there towards the end. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that we talked about in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments below. You can always reach out to me via email if you have any more specific questions, I'm happy to help however I can. Um, other than that, I will see you in the next video.